Good morning. Welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm Christina Schaefer, Social Media Manager for HAR. I am joined this morning by Laura Whitley. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'll have Laura introduce yourself in just a second. Uh, she's with Met Houston Metro and she has a lot to share with us this morning. So we're excited to hear from you. Um, before we do get started, though, uh, make sure you like this share it. Laura has a lot of really great information about what Metro is currently doing and what they're looking to do in the future um, to really support the Houston region. So make sure you share this so that other people can see it too. All right, Laura, well, thank you so much for being here this morning. Well, I appreciate the invitation, Christina. And um, that's right, I'm with Metro. I'm one of the media specialists uh, with Metro. I, I like to say I get to share the good news of Metro and so um, act as liaison between uh, media and uh, Metro and um, also just um, update uh, everyone on uh, you know, all the things that we have going on at Metro. It is uh, a really exciting place uh, mm -hmm. to be every day. Uh, there's a new adventure and we get to serve our community uh, in a really impactful way in yeah. terms of um, taking people to uh, some of the most uh, connecting people to, to critical uh, links in their lives, such mm -hmm. as, you know, work, school, doctor's appointments, grocery, um, and, you know, we get to help uh, move, uh, help people move effectively and efficiently mm -hmm. around our region. Very good. Yeah, we, we called this on the move with Metro, but that's literally what you <laughs> yeah, do is exactly. you keep us all moving, right? We sure do. Um, so speaking of, uh, so what services does Metro offer? And then what is the uh, service area? Because I think sometimes we think about Metro, we may just think of inside the loop, but it's really much more than that, right? Uh, sure, we do expand uh, definitely outside of the loop and even outside of the beltway. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, primarily, uh, we, we serve uh, you know, a large uh, swath of Harris County, mm -hmm. but also um, ex expand beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we have routes that uh, extend fa uh, far you know, up into the Cypress area, mm -hmm. Um, also down 45, uh, mm -hmm. you know, near NASA road, uh, we have, those are more park and ride routes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, so there's about 27, uh, park and ride commuter routes. Wow. Um, so people can come and park their car and yeah. that delivers them generally, uh, into the medical center or downtown, uh, a nice connection, yeah. <laughs> uh, and get. Uh, folks out of that traffic mm -hmm. on the daily basis. Uh, then we have our local routes, over a hundred of those uh, that uh, transverse all over our city. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have the part, the uh, Metro rail. We have three different rail lines. Uh, one, the North South one, that's the red line. Mm -hmm. We have a East uh, West line, which is the green line. And then we have a Southeast line into downtown, which is the purple line. Wow. Uh, and in addition to that, mm -hmm. uh, we also have paratransit services, which is Metro lift, mm -hmm. uh, which um, helps uh, people who have uh, disabilities be able to move around and get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And additionally, there's also Vanpool, Metro Star Vanpool. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a service that some folks may not know about where you actually can get with a group that of people that live in your sort of general area mm -hmm. and all meet up and you share a van to pool uh, to go to a workplace uh, day in, day out. And that wow. costs down significantly on the expenses uh, for commuting to work. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's carpooling, but even better because Metro is taking it, you, right? It, it is. And um, th those folks, yeah, it's essentially carpooling, uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, everybody pays a, a, a fee mm -hmm. and they have a van and um, they share the cost of gas and tolls. They decide where they want to go, when mm -hmm. they want to leave, who's the driver, right. um, all of these things. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're traveling over, you know, 10, 15 miles one way on a daily basis, uh, it's really something that um, helps cut down on those costs. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's offered all over your service area? Right, right. Actually, yeah. those, those van pools can even go beyond the service area, oh, wow. which... Um, is uh, another benefit in, in folks like that as well. Yeah, well, speaking yeah. of commuting and carpooling, yes. um, there are some updates to some of the HOV 
There is. There's actually a pilot that's going on right now that mm-hmm. um, has gotten quite a lot of excitement um, on the North Freeway inbound on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, drivers can actually ride uh, the HOV, HOT lane for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're coming from like the Spring Woodlands area, um, coming down into town, you can uh, ride that for free on the weekends. That's a pilot that's going to be around through uh, July. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's exciting, particularly if you're out house hunting or something like that <laughs> I mean, you know I, absolutely um i know sometimes you can clock a lot of miles when you're mm-hmm. looking around so yeah, yeah so for yeah. all our spring woodlands That's conroe right. <laughs> members check right. that out exactly. on the weekends mm-hmm. and hopefully that goes well and it can expand to other sides of town as well yeah. is that the is that the goal i don't know what exactly what the plan is beyond mm-hmm. that but it's definitely something they wanted to try out and um you know kind of see what kind of um you know how many trips uh they they counted as far as cars coming through and, uh, you know, just what the demand was for it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, so let me just check for a second. If you have any questions for Laura, just go ahead and type them into the comments and we will, we will get to those. Uh, just a lot of people telling you good morning this morning, morning. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so far, but I'm sure they'll have more questions for you. So, um, we were discussing before the summer fun program. Can you tell us about, about that? So this is an exciting program. Um, it's actually the third year for the program. And basically, students get to ride free on all of our services all summer long, as long as they have uh, a Metro uh, a Metro Q student fare card. So okay. uh, for, let me start with our with Q, what the Q yeah. card is. Uh, for uh, people who ride, you can get a card. And mm-hmm. uh, basically, it's like a, a, where you can put your money. And it it debits your every time you get on a bus or a train, mm-hmm. you tap it and it deducts from the value of the card. Mm-hmm. Uh, students have a card that's the same, except it's coded that they're a student. And students always ride for a 50% discount off regular fare on Metro, mm-hmm. as long as they have their card. Okay. In the summer, so starting June 1st through August 31st, students who have their card uh, when they tap it, it won't, they won't be charged at all. So they wow. essentially get to ride for free. So, you know, a student who maybe um, is, uh, you know, coming from the Katy area, mm-hmm. uh, you know, wants to take the park and ride in, uh, mm-hmm. maybe is uh, doing an internship downtown, mm-hmm. can get on, um, uh, you know, at the one of the uh, park and rides that serve uh, that Katy corridor mm-hmm. and um, ride in for free. And wow. so, and no, you know, we're not talking about gas, you know, no parking expenses and all of that. Um, So it's as long and it's good for students K through college Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, high school students that are, you know, maybe taking some extra classes over the summer, Mm -hmm. um, again, have access uh, to get to where they need to go. And, you know, uh, maybe you want to take the kids out for an outing, a little fun museum uh, or or something like that. And, you know, it's a lot of people work that, what is it, the 80 you know, you have Fridays off. Mm -hmm. And so um, being able to, you know, get the kids on and just everybody just needs to make sure the kids have a card. So they go to your website to get that? Absolutely. You can get that at Mm ridemetro.org. And um, or you can come to Metro 1900 Main. We have a ride store and um, get your card there. But it's probably easier just to do it online (laughs) and upload your information and it'll get mailed to you. That's but, great. Yeah. And so that's all summer long. All summer long. Absolutely. Wow. So get your student fare cards. So <laughs> students can ride for free. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Okay. Um, so a big program I've been hearing a lot about from you guys is Metro Next. Right. Right. So let's let's talk about that. What is Metro Next? Well, like your um, today's uh, focus is, we're trying to move forward. And mm-hmm. um, and actually, uh, so Metro Next is a uh, project and a uh, that we have going on where we are developing a regional transit plan. It's going to be designed to serve the region through about 2040. Um, as we were discussing, you know, the population in our region is uh, projected to nearly double mm-hmm. uh, during that time. So that's going to mean, um, <laughs> you know, so much opportunity and growth for our area mm-hmm. um, and um, all of these fresh ideas and wonderful folks. But it's also going to mean that we need to figure out how to move people and keep our region from being, you know, stuck in gridlock all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's really going to take some bold investments um, in, in terms of transportation in our region, and that's what Metro Next is designed to do. So right now, um, what we 
what has been out in the public now uh, since the better part of this year mm -hmm. um, has been a plan called the Moving Forward Plan, mm -hmm. which is interesting. That and um, <laughs> the Moving Forward Plan has about forty projects in it. It's a mm -hmm. seven point five billion dollar plan. Mm -hmm. um, there's investments in the local service, investments in uh, park and ride services. Um, some additional uh, rails proposed to uh, connect to the Hobby Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, quite a lot of investments in something that's known as BRT, which is Bus Rapid Transit. Okay. Uh, so essentially, it's um, a train-like bus, so you have a dedicated lane mm -hmm. uh, for the bus to travel like you do a train. Mm -hmm. It runs on rubber tires, but it really looks and feels and functions very much like a bus. They have mm -hmm. had great success uh, with BRT in a number of cities across the United States and other cities such as like in Mexico City mm -hmm. and things like that where they really, it's it's um, less expensive than and, and more uh, flexible than rail. And mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a good component of our plan. Great. Yeah. So. All right, um, so let's take a look and see oops, if we have anything coming in from our members. And as, as you're looking at yeah. that, one thing mm -hmm. I'll say about Metro Next is that we are in, so the um, there's going to be a, a finalized uh, version of that draft plan that's out right now mm -hmm. um, that's going to be coming up here just in uh, shortly here in the summer. So we definitely, if, if folks who haven't um, looked at the plan um, haven't had an opportunity to let us know what they think and um, give us their opinion. We just definitely want engagement mm -hmm. uh, from the public and they can go to metronext.org mm -hmm. and um, check it out and, you know, look and see, you know, how it impacts their community, if it ser serves their needs, if they have thoughts and they can comment. And we would very much appreciate that. Okay, very good. So we were discussing um, before we got started development. Yes. Um, and, and how it's kind of they're looking at what Metro is doing as they develop. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, and when we're talking about development, um, one of the th topics that we uh, run into is transit-oriented development. Mm -hmm. And um, there's you know, right along uh, Metro Rail and the Red Line, uh, which it runs through, you know, from the south, fan and south, all the way up uh, to a north line. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that there are a number of projects going on in terms of residential and even um, other businesses that are being developed along there. Mm -hmm. And um, what we have found is there's really um, a demand for um, good, quick, um, high frequency transit to um, where people are going to live. Mm -hmm. um, there's a development right there uh, in Midtown that's uh, slated to be, uh, uh, it's going to be the first high rise in Midtown. Mm -hmm. And it's slated to uh, could be done very soon. And um, the uh, company, um, the development company is from Melbourne, Australia. Mm -hmm. And they actually chose that region. One of the most specific reasons why they chose that Part, that property to mm -hmm. develop on is because of its access to Metro Rail. Yeah. Um, because it, you know, they're the people that live in that building are now will be able to, you know, move around uh, easily mm -hmm. and won't have to be car dependent. Doesn't mean they necessarily won't have a car or won't need to use a car for some trips, mm -hmm. but they won't need to use it for every trip. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually visited with uh, one of your member realtors uh, when I was working on a, a, a a project for Metro, um, who's a sells primarily in the Heights area, mm -hmm. and you know he was telling me just <laughs> every day he hears um, from buyers that are asking for access mm -hmm. and options when it comes to transportation. And again, um, high frequency transit. So yeah. we're talking about trans transit that comes um, every. 10 minutes or so, you yeah. know, um, that's very frequent, like like the train, or we also have high frequency routes that run on a real regular basis like mm -hmm. that. And just how important that is, and from a seller's perspective, um, how um, profitable that has been. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I actually was listening to a podcast last week and, and somebody was being interviewed and they were saying that, yeah, they don't have a car. And, and I was like, wait a minute, how do they not have a car? And he, he started talking about the different lines he takes. And uh -huh. so basically, you know, if if you can live and work in areas that Metro is, is servicing, then, 
you know, you yeah. don't necessarily need a car in his case or don't have to be completely dependent on a car. Like Absolutely. And I mean, yeah. that's a concept that, you know, in other parts of the country in the world, I mean, there's that's many people normal. that <laughs> operate their whole lives without yeah. a vehicle, that personal vehicle. Yeah. Um, and um, it these, just seems so funny. In I, Houston, how can you be not right. have a car, but. With and the metro but, services. Yeah. And possible. there are, there are people that are, or mm -hmm. we call it multimodal, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so some days they take the train, others they take the bus. Sometimes they um, drive, uh, ride a bike. Mm -hmm. And then like, maybe they'll use one of those like zip cars or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kind of some type of ride share mm -hmm. uh, thing going on. So it, it, it definitely is possible. And I think as we continue to make investments um, in this region, in terms of public transit, uh, it'll become more and more of a possibility. I, mm -hmm. I have a, a, a minivan because I have a, a, about three three boys. And, you know, <laughs> so for years I've driven all over uh, town. But let me tell you, when I started figuring out the bus routes and was my um, taught at least my oldest son how mm -hmm. to get to his school on the metro bus it was truly life-changing yeah. like that first day when i didn't have to drive him and i could put him on the metro bus versus driving him in the swagger wagon myself <laughs> it was like i was like i felt like i was a new woman you know <laughs> so no it, it really is um exciting uh when you can figure out um how to maybe be more efficient with your time and your resources mm -hmm. and utilize uh, public transit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so let's see, uh, somebody asked, actually, I'm sorry, Dusty asked, do you know anything about the I-45 coalition plan and when it will happen? I'm not familiar with the I-45 uh, coalition plan. I'm uh, that I don't know if that's a met. I don't think that's a metro plan okay. per se, um, but there certainly are. That may be. I'm thinking something through HEAC, or I'm not sure. Um, okay. But the we don't have information on that one. Um, I know that there are investments um, in terms of that would impact uh, I-45 in, mm -hmm. in that Metro Next plan, and it's, there's a likelihood there may be some ways that those line up. Okay. Okay. Um, Dusty also asked, will, will there be a Metro bus down Main Street? Well, there's, if we're talking about Main Street downtown, mm -hmm. there's Metro Rail and there are routes that, that service the Metro area. Um, the, the alignments that I've seen um, don't necessarily put a, an additional bus down Main Street because, mm -hmm. because we have the uh, Metro Rail that um, serves Main Street. And then so with the rail, mm -hmm. uh, m most of the time going down May Main Street either way, it's just two lanes, you know, going each direction. Mm -hmm. um, so there it, or some sometimes even one lane, mm -hmm. depending on where you are. So there there may not be room to add a, a, a bus down that lane. OK, very good. Um, we also have a question. Is there a plan to add any more rail lines anywhere in the city? So uh, on the uh, Metro Next plan, mm -hmm. there uh, is, uh, if, if you take a look at it at metronext.org, you'll notice there is a, uh, the plan includes an extension of uh, the current, uh, re re the current lines uh, to connect to Hobby Airport. Now there's been some um, additional plans that have been presented uh, by our planning department to the board mm -hmm. that our board's considering for that final draft I was telling you about mm -hmm. that actually, so the original plan that you'll see online um, was extending both the green and purple line to Hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, our planning department last month presented uh, a drawing that essentially uh, combines both of those lines through rail and connects to Hobby. Mm -hmm. So that's, and, um, and also there, the, the Metro Next plan includes a little uh, extension of the red line um, with rail and then, but like to serve um, Bush Airport and other areas, there um, is that bus rapid transit that I was telling mm -hmm. you about that um, will be again, like a train, but, but it runs on rubber tires. Yeah. That sounds really neat. Mm -hmm. um, so Robert's saying, um, oh. he's asking about a rail. Uh, he said, you know, we're the fourth largest city and we can't get from IAH or get to or from IAH to Hobby. So um, he's, I guess, just kind of following up on mm -hmm. the real question. Um, Rhonda said, uh, oh, OK, she was following up on the I-45 coalition plan. 
Um, she said she's going to add a link to some videos so our audience can find out okay. more about that. So that'll be helpful. Um, Steven said, what is the plan to get people from, from the high-speed rail in Northwest Houston to downtown or the energy corridor? So the, the high-speed rail is not Metro's project. So in, in, as far as that's concerned, we don't have a, a connection. We don't, I don't have a lot of information for high-speed rail. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you at the um, Northwest Transit Center, which is, actually going, which is actually already slated and has been approved to have a major expansion here coming up mm -hmm. um, over uh, the next year plus, uh, there is consideration uh, for that high-speed rail um, that has been approved. And um, with the Metro Next plan, um, there um, also are opportunities uh, for uh, connections, like again, through the bus rapid transit mm -hmm. and other local bus um, network expansion um, to help with those connections uh, that um, Stephen's asking about. Great. All right. That actually looks like all the questions coming in from our members. Did you okay. have anything else that you wanted to add or share with us? No, I mean, I just uh, really appreciate the opportunity. You know, um, I was telling you about um, HAR and uh, not HAR and um, HCAD, mm -hmm. um, how they've done a study of um, the property values mm -hmm. um, along Metro Rail and yes. found um, they did a study um, from that looking at values from 2014 to 2017 mm -hmm. and uh, for the properties that are along Metro Rail and found a 31% increase in those values. Wow. Um, and so, you know, when you, again, when you talk about uh, the um, opportunity that making investments in terms of public transit investments in our community can provide, mm -hmm. um, you're talking about being able to move people more places um, and also as far as how that impacts the land values. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that study and, and those results are, are really uh, pretty powerful. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And for our members that don't know, in Matrix, uh, which is our multiple listing program, um, you can actually go on the map and click the little overlays and see where the public transportation uh, pickups and stuff are right. so you can see that there's a park and ride right down yeah. the street or things like that. So you have that available in Matrix as well, which is really helpful. Um, so that is, I think, it. That just a couple people thanking you. So All thank right. you again so oh, much my for pleasure. joining us this morning. Glad and giving to be us here. This update, and we'll definitely be checking out Metro next. All right. One more thing I wanted to mention is uh, Laura actually did a consumer knowledge series of videos for us. All really great videos that were in created with the uh, mindset that realtors can share them. Yes. So there's videos like, what is flood insurance, which we'll be talking about next week as well. I'll tell you about that <laughs> in a second. Or what is a CMA or why should I work with a realtor? So um, go check that out on HAR's YouTube channel. Um, there's a whole series of, I don't know, 50 videos or it something. Quite a did. few. Quite yeah. a few. <laughs> so go check those out on HAR's YouTube channel. And speaking of flood, um, next week we are going to have uh, two gentlemen from FEMA joining us. So we'll oh, be talking... Yes, yeah, so we'll be talking about a lot about flood insurance and uh, what FEMA is doing right now and what they've been working on since Hurricane Harvey. Um, so, you know, we're almost at flood, hitting flood season yeah, here pretty soon. That's, so that's and helpful. with this past weekend, right. with a lot of the water I that know. we had, it's a uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a hot topic. So yeah. join us next week um, to hear from FEMA and everyone have a great week. Bye bye. Bye bye.